In this video, we're going to learn about uh, quantitative analysis, which is how we can uh, find the formula of a compound by uh, just getting the data from an analysis. There are two kinds of chemical analysis, two kind of categories. One of them is called qualitative analysis. And in qualitative analysis, we're just trying to find out which elements are in the compound. Quantitative analysis asks the question of if you know what elements are in the compound, what amounts of each element are in the compound. So not just what's there, but how much of each element are in the compound. Percent composition, or something that's uh, sometimes called percent by mass, is basically what a percent of the compound is made up of each element according to mass. Uh, this is the result of a quantitative analysis, that when you finish doing a quantitative analysis, this is the result that you have. For example, if you have 0.5462 grams of a compound and you find out that 0.1417 grams of it is nitrogen and 0.4045 grams of it is oxygen, one question that you might ask is, is it made up of anything else besides nitrogen and oxygen? And it isn't, and the way that we know that is because if we take 0.1417 and we add it to 0.0 or 0.4045, we will get 0.4562. And that's the total mass, so that means there wasn't anything else in there besides oxygen and nitrogen. Then the next question that you could ask is, what is the percent composition based on this data? So this is pretty easy to, it's pretty straightforward to figure this out. 0.1417 grams of nitrogen are present in the compound, and that's out of a total of 0.5462 grams. So then we'll express that as a percent by multiplying by 100 and you find out that it's 25.94% uh, nitrogen. So then we have two strategies that we could pursue to find the, the percent oxygen. We could divide 0 0.4045 by 0.5462, just like we did for the nitrogen. Or, since you know there's nothing else in the compound, we could take 100% and subtract that 25.94%, and that would give us uh, 74.06 percent oxygen in this compound. We can also get percent composition information from a formula. So the strategy here is to first find the molar mass of the compound. That's the first thing you want to do. Then using that, find the mass of the elements that are in one mole of a compound. And then you express the element over compound mass ratio that you get as a percent. So, for example, if you were asked, what is the percent composition of N2O3? Um, well, we know we have two moles of nitrogen, and each mole of nitrogen is going to be 14.007 grams per mole. So that means in one mole of N2O3, uh, we would have 28.014 grams. And then for oxygen, well, we have three moles of oxygen. Oxygen from the periodic table is 15.999 grams per mole. That comes out to 47.997 grams of oxygen. And then if we want to find the percent composition, well, we can take our 28.014 grams and divide by the molar mass. And since only these two compounds exist in this compound, the molar mass is just going to be 28.014 plus 47.997. And when we work this all out, and of course we're going to multiply by 100 to express it as a percent, this comes out to 58.367% nitrogen. So then that means if we take 100% and subtract that, we get 41.634% that's oxygen. The empirical formula is almost the opposite. What we're doing here is we're finding the smallest whole number ratio of moles of elements in a compound. So it is a chemical formula, and it's based on a quantitative analysis, which of course can give us either whole raw numbers or it can give us a percent composition. Either way, you can do it. So here's the process. First, you take the mass of each element and you turn it into moles by dividing by molar mass. Then, you, once you find the moles of each element, take the moles of e any of the elements and divide it by the smallest moles. So essentially, what you're doing is the element that has the fewest moles, you're saying that the subscript on that is going to be 1. We're going to base everything 
off of how many times more than one should the other elements be. And then if you have to, scale the ratios up so that you get whole numbers because it doesn't always come out to whole numbers. Uh, it might come out to a fraction. And then use those whole numbers as subscripts in a formula. Best way to know how to do this is by an example. So here's an example. There's a compound made of 0.7117 grams of nitrogen, and then the rest is oxygen, and the total mass is given here. So we have to find the empirical formula. Okay, the first thing to do is to find out how much um, oxygen is here. So we'll take 1.5246 grams, that's the total mass of the compound, and we'll take 0.7117 grams, which is the nitrogen, and that will tell us how much oxygen is there, and it's 0.8129 grams of oxygen. And then this is our nitrogen. Okay, so now we're going to change each of these to moles. So we'll take 0.7117 grams of nitrogen, and use the molar mass, which is 14.007 grams per mole, to find how many moles of nitrogen that is. And it's 0 0.05081 moles of nitrogen. Then we'll do the same thing for oxygen. Up here we got 15.999 grams in every mole of oxygen. And when you do this math, you get also 0 0.05081 moles of oxygen. So since we have the same number of moles of each, uh, that means we have an easy formula. It's just N1O1, NO. Here's another example. Uh, we have a compound that's made of three elements. And here we don't have raw grams. We have percent composition. This is super easy to deal with. What you do is you just assume that you have 100 grams because the ratio should be the same. Uh, the formula should be the same no matter how big the sample is. And it's just easy to say we have 100 grams, which means we have 32.37 grams of sodium, 22.57 grams of sulfur, and 45.06 grams of oxygen. So now we're going to turn these into moles. Um, so for sodium, the molar mass is 22.99 grams per mole. When we do that calculation, we get 1.408 moles of sodium. And then sulfur is uh, 32.064 grams in a mole. So this calculation will give us 0 0.7039 moles of sulfur. And then for oxygen, a mole of oxygen, 15.999 grams. And that will give us 2.816 moles of oxygen. So the smallest number of moles is the moles of sulfur, and we're going to make that sort of the one in our formula. So we'll take 1.408, and we'll divide it by 0.7038. It's 0 0.7039. And uh, that's going to come out approximately to, to 2. And these often do come out to whole numbers. Not always, but sometimes they do. If it's within a few hundredths of a whole number, just round it to that whole number. If it's not, then you want to look for some simple fraction to round it to. Okay, so what that means is for every one sulfur, there are going to be 2 um, moles of sodium. And then if you take 2.816 and divide by 0 0.7039, that's going to come out to approximately 4 to 1. Uh, because 28 is 4 times 7 and 14 is 2 times 7, you know, you don't really have to have a calculator to make these estimates because you're, you're, you're looking for whole numbers or simple fractions. Okay, so what this means is there's two sodiums for every one sulfur, and there's four oxygens for every one sulfur, so Na2SO4 is the name of the compound or the formula of the compound, I should say. Another type of analysis uh, is called indirect analysis. And this is actually fairly common. Uh, it's often not possible to isolate the elements from a compound, but to separate them into product compounds. So instead of getting all the oxygen um, in one spot as oxygen and all the hydrogen in another spot as hydrogen and all the carbon in another spot as carbon, you can get the elements in different compounds and separate them that way. 
here's how this works. Let's say we have a compound that's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we want to analyze it. We can put that into, into a tube and then fasten that to another tube that has a water absorber so that any water that passes through that tube will get uh, absorbed into this absorber, and then you can weigh it before and after and find out how much water got absorbed. And then we'll attach that to a chamber that has a CO2 absorber that will absorb the CO2 that comes out of this. And then we'll hook the whole thing up to an oxygen tank and pump oxygen through here and then light it on fire. So this, by heating it up, we cause a reaction to occur, and we're burning the compound, and the products will be carbon dioxide and water, which will go through this exhaust stream into these two tanks. So all the carbon, we notice, ends up in carbon dioxide because there isn't any in water. And all the hydrogen ends up in water because there's no hydrogen in carbon dioxide. So by finding out how much CO2 was created and how much water was created, we can figure out how much carbon and hydrogen were originally in the compounds. And then oxygen will have to deal with another way. So how we do this is we, first of all, take the mass of water and the mass of CO2 and turn that into moles of water and moles of CO2. Then we get the moles of hydrogen that were in the original compound from the moles of water. It'll be double because there's two moles of hydrogen in every mole of water. Then we get the moles of carbon from the moles of CO2. And that's going to be the same number because there's one carbon mole in every mole of CO2. And then once we have this, we just find that ratio like we normally do to get the empirical formula. Here are some additional steps if there's oxygen in the formula. You can take the mass of water and the mass of CO2, and from that, find the moles of hydrogen and carbon, which you have to do anyway. And then take the moles of carbon and hydrogen and turn that into masses of carbon and hydrogen. If you take the total mass of the compound and subtract how much was carbon and hydrogen, the, le the rest of it had to be oxygen, and then you have your mass of oxygen. Then you can take the mass of oxygen and turn that into moles of oxygen, and then you get the ratio of all three, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Let's do this indirect analysis. Uh, we have 5.048 grams of a compound. The compound only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. Um, when we burn it, we get 7.406 grams of carbon dioxide, and that's how we're going to know how much carbon was in it, and 3.027 grams of water, and we need to find the empirical formula. Let's first take the carbon dioxide, the 7.406 grams of it, and we'll turn that into moles by using the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44.008 grams for every mole. And there's one mole of carbon in every one mole of CO2, so the moles of CO2 and the moles of carbon are the same. And that number turns out to be 0.1683 moles of carbon. Now, we're going to need grams of carbon ultimately, so let's multiply by this by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.011 grams per mole. And that tells us that this compound had in it, in this sample, 2.021 grams of carbon. Let's do the same thing for the water. So we have 3.027 grams of water. Water is 18.015 grams for every mole. And... Um, there are two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O. So this gives us 0 0.3361 moles of hydrogen. And again, we're going to want mass of hydrogen ultimately, so we'll multiply by 1.008 grams per mole, the molar mass of hydrogen. And this tells us that the compound sample had 0.3387 grams of hydrogen in it. So the rest of it was oxygen. So we'll take our total 5.048 grams, and we'll subtract from that 2.021 grams, which was the carbon's mass, and 0.3387 grams, which was the hydrogen's molar mass, or mass. And this gives us 2.688 grams of oxygen. We'll change this into moles with molar mass. So 15.999 grams per mole is the molar mass of oxygen, which tells us that this sample had 0 0.1680 moles of oxygen. The moles of oxygen and the moles of carbon are about the same, so that's a one-to-one -one ratio. And 0 0.3361 is about double, 0 0.1687. So 
that means there's two hydrogens for every carbon or for every oxygen. So the empirical formula then is C1H2O1. Sometimes the empirical formula is not actually the formula of the compound. But when it is, the mole ratios are always going to be the same. Here's an example. NO2, N2O4, N3O6. They're all one nitrogen to two oxygen. So the empirical formulas are all the same. How do we deal with this? Well, you have to find a way to get the actual molar mass of the compound. We'll learn several strategies for that throughout the year, um, but for now you'll have to be given that. We can find the molar mass of the empirical formula by just calculating it. The actual molar mass divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula will always turn out to be either one or some whole number multiple. So what we do is we take the subscripts in the empirical formula and just scale them up by that whole number, whatever it turns out to be. Let's do this example. The empirical formula of hydrazine is NH2. The molar mass of hydrazine is 32 grams per mole. We want to find the molecular formula. Well, the first thing we can do, we don't have to do really precise calculations here. This is pretty easy because it's always whole numbers. Nitrogen is around 14. Hydrogen is around 1 mole grams per mole. So we'll add 2, and that gives us about 16. The molar mass is 32, which is you know pretty much double 16. So that means we're going to double the subscripts. So N1H2 becomes N2H4, and that's the molecular formula of hydrazine.